When people hear something controversial, people tend to jump to an automatic conclusion over that subject without objectively and unbiasedly analyzing what's being said and the implications of it. The fact of the matter is, when evaluating an argument, we need to be objective and unbiased about it. In logic, the rule of thumb is, if the premises are true, then the conclusion must follow. That is to say, if the premises are not wrong, and if the conclusion is relevant to the premises, then the conclusion is also not wrong. These are the things that you need to look at when determining if an argument is invalid or sound. Invalid means the argument is only incorrect in its form. Unsound means the argument is incorrect with its statements. Every argument has pre premises and a conclusion. The premises and conclusion are called propositions. In centennial logic, which is the form of logic used by modern philosophers, every proposition contains variables and a function. The variables are the subject and the predicate. There are six functions. Negation, which is executed with an R0. Conjunction, which is executed with an AND. Disjunction, which is executed with an OR. Conditional, which is executed with an IF-THEN statement. And biconditional, which is executed with an IF and only IF statement. And exists claiming that something exists. The difference between conditional and biconditional can be shown in this example. Conditional propositions have this form, if P then Q. For example, if there is fire, there is oxygen. But if there is oxygen, that does not automatically mean there is fire. Biconditional proposition have this form, if P then Q, and if Q then P. For example, if there is electricity, then there is an electrical charge, and if there is, and if there is an electrical charge, there is electricity. There are two types of arguments. Inductive arguments, which argues if the premises are true and the conclusion follows, it's still possible the conclusion is untrue, but not probable, probable. And deductive arguments, which argue that if the premises are true and the conclusion follows, then it, then it is impossible for the conclusion to not be true. Truth tables are used to see if the argument contains contradictions or tautologies. A contradiction is a proposition that will always be false. A tautology is a proposition that will always be true. In a truth table, if a contradiction exists, there will be a column filled all with false values, which are represented by the letter F. If a tautology exists, there will be a column filled with truth values, represented by the letter T. In a truth table, the true and false values do not necessarily mean true or false. These are only values that are assigned to a Boolean type variable. Some truth tables use ones and zeros instead of t's and f's to avoid this confusion. Here is what a truth table looks like in calculus. Now that you have an adequate background of how logic works, you should be able to ar evaluate arguments unbiasedly. But you need to know some rules. Let's take a look at an argument claiming that God exists. I will show you how to refute these arguments 
and I will be walking you through these arguments to try to avoid any case you think that I am trying to be deceptively persuasive. Remember, if the premises are true and the conclusion follows, then the conclusion must also be true. Now, before we look at these arguments, listen to what the hosts of the Atheist Experience has to say about these kinds of arguments. Hey, I, it, 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 Tra right? As Tracy just pointed out, it very much depends on what it is that you're trying to prove. Um, it uh, does. As, it as does. What types but of evidence you're going to accept? Yeah. So, for example, when somebody says, "I want to prove God exists," the first question is, you know, they have to demonstrate have what, to it, what it is they're calling yeah. God, and then they also have to demonstrate a measurable, demonstrable, verifiable manifestation because that's what existence is. As they said, the first question you need to ask is, "What is the argument claiming God is?" And secondly, what manifestation of existence? is it trying to show that God has? Keep these questions in mind as we go through a deductive argument claiming to prove that God exists. Remember, a deductive argument argues that if the premises are true and the conclusion follows, then it is impossible for the conclusion to be untrue. And please be patient. Try not to jump to any sudden conclusions and please watch the full video and listen to all that will be said. Give this video a fair judgment and don't judge a book by its cover. In the first premise, we have what is being claimed as God, a maximally great entity. Please do not confuse a possible universe with an existing universe. A possible universe is either a universe that is real or not real. In the third premise, we have the manifestation of existence that this God has. A priori, meaning knowing beforehand, to say something is maximally great is already assuming it exists in the greatest possible sense, which is existing in all possible universes. It cannot be maximally great if it does not exist. A maximally great entity possibly exists, which is only saying that it's possible, but we are not sure. If it is possible that it exists, it must exist in some possible universe, which is saying that if it does not exist, then it would exist in the possible universe that is untrue. And if it does exist, then it exists in the possible universe that is true. And in order for an entity to be maximally great, again, it must exist in all possible universes. All three premises are true. Does the conclusion follow? If this maximally great entity existed in all possible universes, then it would also exist in our real universe because our real universe is one of the possible universes. If this entity existed in the real universe, then it does exist. Can you see how the conclusion follows? Or does it? What about fallacies? If the argument is unsound or invalid, and has true premises, but is incorrect still, 
then that must mean there is a fallacy in the argument. Let's take a look at common fallacies. I think one of the most often used fallacies is a non sequitur. A non sequitur is, a s is simply when the conclusion does not follow from the premises. A non sequitur is an informal fallacy. If an argument commits a non sequitur, then that means with its premises, even if they are true, they say nothing about the conclusion. We can see that the conclusion is relevant to premise 3. That means this argument is not committing a non sequitur. A lot of informal fallacies are types of non sequiturs. Many people object to this argument because they say you can replace God with any other creature. But if they did, then they would be arguing that a non-creature that has the attributes of God exists, and thus is still actually describing God and not a non-God creature. I cannot go through every fallacy there is, so I will give you this website that lists all fallacies and explains them in depth. The website will be listed in the description of this video.